In preparation for the release of the Resident Evil 4 Remake, I've been playing some of the games and watching a lot of videos with clickbaity titles like The Scariest Moment From Every Resident Evil Game and Top 20 Scariest Moments in Resident Evil Games and reading articles like 10 Times Resident Evil Was Actually Scary. These lists mention a lot of the same things over and over again, like the giant fetus baby monster thing in Resident Evil 8 which is pretty freaking terrifying. Or just everything about Nemesis in the original Resident Evil 3, or the battle against the weird insectoid mutated Marguerite in Resident Evil 7, or this creepy silent staring old lady whose head slowly turns to watch you wherever you go in Resident Evil 7, or everything about the nearly immortal and hilarious axe murderer Jack Baker in Resident Evil 7, or everything about Mr. X relentlessly stomping after you through the police station in the Resident Evil 2 remake. But I haven't seen any of them mention what I personally remember as one of the scariest moments in the series. So today I've got a bit of clickbait of my own. Here's the true scariest moment in any Resident Evil game ever. Whoa! Okay, I don't know if this is really the scariest moment ever in the series, but it is a moment that really scared me, and I think it's worth examining to see exactly how the developers crafted this particular scare. I want to take a close look at Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. I already posted a video discussing some of the things that make 7 one of the best horror games ever made, so I don't want to rehash anything I already said there. Instead, I want to zoom in on one specific moment in the game. This stairwell and door leading down to a basement. Seriously, I'm just going to spend this entire video talking about this one door. I really think it's that impressive. Resident Evil 7 was all about a subtler, quieter kind of horror than most of the rest of the series. Horror founded on a sense of slowly creeping dread and irresistibly rising tensions. And this door leading to the basement exemplifies that kind of subtle and quiet horror. But before you understand what makes this door so scary to me, you have to understand everything that leads up to it. In the first chapter of the game, you are exploring this huge, dark, dilapidated, disgusting by you manner. The visual and audio design of this setting are absolutely perfect. It looks and sounds really scary. The rooms are dark, foreboding, and full of filth, and sometimes you can find patches of a strange black gooey substance. It feels like a place that once upon a time was a cozy and welcoming family home, but something very wrong has happened here, and it's not cozy or welcoming at all anymore. The setting is very quiet. Most of the time all you can hear is your own character's footsteps and some strange bumps and scrapes whose sources you can't place. And you can never tell if those bumps and scrapes are just a part of the creepy background auditory ambiance, or if it's the sound of a monster nearby who's about to make you poop your pants. Because there are enemies searching for you here. While exploring this bayou manor, you are being hunted by Jack Baker, the terrifying and sort of hilarious patriarch of the Baker family. If he spots you, which he will again and again, he chases you through the maze-like halls of this house, calling out taunts and dark jokes as he tries to murder you. The whole experience is really, really scary. It's one of the scariest games I've ever played. But here's an important point. All of this genuine terror occurs either on the ground floor or up on the second floor. It's only after fully exploring both that you reach this staircase leading down into the basement. And when I first saw this staircase and that door at the bottom, I immediately, instantly knew things were about to get way, way worse. As scary and tense and stressful as everything leading up to this moment was, I could tell just by looking that things were about to get a lot worse. Because now we're going down into the basement, baby. I want to pause here to discuss how basements function in horror stories. Across so many novels, movies, and video games, so much horror occurs in basements. So many monsters seem to have a preference for creeping and crawling in basements instead of in a kitchen or living room. Room. Have you ever wondered why that is? Why do horror authors and filmmakers and game developers keep returning to the same sort of space? There is something inherently frightening about the basement as a setting. The average basement tends to be a bit scarier than most other rooms in the house. There are several reasons for this, and the first has to do with familiarity. Horror is all about discomfort. Spaces and sounds and 
visuals that make you feel uncomfortable. The more time you spend in a particular space, the more familiar you will feel with that space. And the more familiar you are, the more comfortable you will feel, the less scared you will feel. This is why horror games tend to seem less scary the longer you play. The more familiar you get with their mechanics, their monsters, their methods of scares, the more comfortable you will feel and the less scared you will feel. This is why most horror games tend to be pretty short. It works the same way in the rooms of a house. Most people spend less time in their basements than in other rooms of the house, and so the basement will always remain this relatively unfamiliar space in your home, and so will always be at least a little bit scarier than other rooms. Let's go back to that idea of comfort. Most basements are not fully finished or fully furnished, so they won't have all those little pleasing comforting visual touches that the rest of the house does. Those little background details you usually don't even notice, things like completed floors and walls. An unfinished or unfurnished basement will be by nature utilitarian and comfortless in design. And because it's less comfortable, it will also be inherently at least a little more prone to being scary. Finally, there is lighting. Basements tend to be underground. They tend not to have much, if any, natural lighting. They are naturally darker than other rooms in your house. And because darkness affects comfort too, it also affects how potentially scary the space can appear. If you spend a bunch of time in your basement, fully finish and furnish it, and turn on all the lights, it won't seem scary anymore. It's the lack of all those things that make basements seem scarier than other rooms in the house. So let's get back to Resident Evil 7. This house is scary no matter what floor you're on. The whole thing is completely terrifying. But then you reach these stairs leading down to the basement, and you know that it's about to get worse. Because basements are always worse. In any horror media anywhere, you never want to go down to the basement. The basement always sucks. Basements in real life usually suck. And this is a horror game. If the basement in the average, totally normal townhouse is kind of scary, just imagine how scary the basement in this already really scary house is gonna be. This basement is gonna be terrifying, and you have to go down there. If you wanna keep progressing in the game, you have to descend those stairs. So many horror games will throw players into a scary situation against their will. For example, when a monster suddenly bursts through a door or window and starts chasing you, that's the developer's put you in a scary situation without any choice on your part. That's less scary to me because I don't have any agency. It'll happen no matter what I do. I might as well be watching a cutscene. But you have to choose to descend these stairs. You have to consciously will yourself down into a scary situation, knowing it's going to be scarier than anything else you've encountered so far. The visual design here is absolutely perfect too. The stairs themselves are dark and plain, and there's a single light illuminating the white door at the bottom. Your attention is immediately drawn all the way to the bottom of the staircase, to that door. The door itself is completely bland. Nothing about its design gives you any hint of what kind of horrors await behind it, which only heightens the tension, because you know horrors are waiting behind it. You just have no clue what form they will take. As you descend, it feels like the staircase is just long enough to give you enough time to imagine all of the horrible things that that might be waiting for you once you reach the bottom. And then you're there. Something I noticed going through those lists of scariest moments in the Resident Evil series is that the lists were filled with jump scares. Jump scares can be terrifying, but they're only ever terrifying for a single moment. I'm much more impressed by the sustained scare, a dread or terror that lasts. And this door is a dread that lasts, because once you enter this basement, it's worse. It's so much worse than anything you imagined. It's immediately completely terrifying. It is so dark down here. All of the walls and floors are covered in this sticky, grotesque black mold that is growing and oozing everywhere. Up to this point in the game, you've only encountered maybe one of these mold monsters, but once you start exploring the basement, you are surrounded by them. Some of them literally spawn behind you, slowly and quietly creeping up on you. Their visual design is horrific. They have tons of health and take forever to go down. Their animations are so wobbly that their heads are almost impossible to aim for. They spawn right out of that black oozing mold, so they can appear anywhere at any time. 
and it just keeps getting worse. Down here, you discover evidence of the torture and experimentation the Baker family has been inflicting on the people they kidnap. You find bathtubs filled with this mold, which were apparently used for transforming corpses. You find a morgue filled with names of the dead and descriptions of their fates. There's at least one vague mention of rape. The basement makes excellent use of sound design, too. Most of the basement is disconcertingly quiet until you reach this engine room, which is so loud that you can't hear anything else, including any sounds the monsters surrounding you make while they're sneaking up on you. You thought you hated the quiet, but you'll discover that you hate a space that's really loud even more. And it still keeps getting worse, because at the very heart of this basement, you're destined for a claustrophobic confrontation with the seemingly immortal and unstoppable Jack Baker, a one-on-one -on -one oversized power tool battle that is easily one of the most impressive in the entire series, if only for how cramped and brutal it is. That's what makes this staircase and the door to the basement one of the most memorable scares in the series for me. It is quiet and subtle. It builds off of hours of terror that have preceded it, and this scare is sustained. You see that door, and you know things are about to get really bad, and they actually do get really bad. The promise of terror is totally fulfilled. Things just keep getting worse after this door, so much worse even than you had imagined. When I think of truly perfect scares in the Resident Evil series, sure that weird baby fetus monster thing was pretty freaky, and sure Mr. X was tremendously well designed from a gameplay perspective, but it's the quieter bits of terror that really stick with me years after. In this door, this staircase, as simple as it may seem, as forgettable as they may have been to you, for me this is one of the most perfectly crafted moments of subtle dread to be found in the entire franchise.